Hello, and welcome to the TechBits YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the power of uniqueness of Postgres tables with primary keys. Let's go ahead and get started. Primary keys. Notice that on the left hand navigation area, we have with SQL syntax, you can create a table with create table. That's the start part of your SQL script. After that, we're going to be explaining how we can set up the name. So we started with create table followed by the table name. And that's great so far. The next step is to decide what do we want to do to create the table name. It's recommended to make it as descriptive as possible or mnemonic as it's also known. Why? Because it helps you remember what its contents are. So the next step is to identify your columns, name them appropriately. That's the first part. You can have multiple columns as you define them as well. The next part and step is the data types. These data types match one to one for each column. There's a variety of ranges in there for the content of a data type, such as integer, a number, a var char, a text, a date, timestamp, and boolean. Any of those will do the trick. Last but not least is the constraint. So a constraint is an optional component. That's the first item we have to discuss. Why optional? You don't have to have them on each column. That's the biggest item to remember. Followed by, they are used to enforce rules or conditions on the data stored in that column. A few examples of these are primary keys, unique, not null, checked, etc. Check one of our previous videos listed in the description here if you want to go furthermore and analyze constant constraints. After we've talked about that, we can discuss a little bit more on the items of their advantages. Why? There's, as you can see, six items listed as, as advantages here. Let's discuss the first one, uniqueness. A primary key ensures the uniqueness of each row in a table. That's the whole point of it. It will guarantee that no two rows will have the same combination of values in the primary columns. This will help you at the moment of data retrieval, updates, and maintaining integrity. We move now on to the data integrity. Data integrity. Primary keys enforce referential integrity by providing a reliable means of linking tables together. This serves as a basis for defining and enforcing relationships between tables, such as utilizing foreign keys. With primary keys in place, you're ensuring that the data relationships are accurately maintained, preventing orphan or inconsistent data. This is important for later down the road. Now we move into indexing. By default, Postgres automatically creates an index on the primary key columns of a table. Indexes facilitate faster data retrieval and improve query performance. Queries that involve searching or joining based on the primary key benefit from the efficient lookup provided by the index. Now let's talk about clustering. Clustering in Postgres, the primary key columns can be used as a clustering key when defining a cluster index. Clustering arranges the physical storage of table data in the same order as the index, which can improve query performance for certain types of queries, especially when accessing multiple rows in a sequential manner. Optimization. The query optimizer in Postgres utilizes primary keys to generate optimal query execution plan. It can leverage the uniqueness and indexing properties of primary keys to optimize query operations, such as joins, aggregations, and sorting. Data modeling best practice. Using primary keys is considered the best practice in database design. This is very important, so keep that right there on top of your items to be looking for and out when you're designing and modeling your database. It promotes a structured and organized approach to data modeling and ensures the integrity and reliability of the data stored in the database. It is important to select the proper primary keys 
or table based on the uniqueness and stability of the data they represent. Composite primary keys can also be used when necessary to ensure uniqueness across multiple columns. That said, let's go ahead and switch for a quick demo here. So we're in Postgres clearly in PSQL. Let's first start by going back up into our history and first create a database called table primary key. We have that created. We're now going to connect to it. As indicated, we are connected with a user Postgres. Now we're going to perform an insert. We're going to create a table into this table that we're going to create some inserts with it. Done. Notice that we have two columns, ID, integer, the primary key, the constraints, the name, and not null. All those constraints are already defined. So now let's perform some insert that indicated here. We're going to create insert three tuplas. Notice that we are in clearly indicated that we were able to insert the values. Now, last but not least, we're going to put this to the test by inserting duplicates here. I'm going to insert a key of one, the name of the column. We're going to try to duplicate the primary key. The only thing different is going to be the name. That's the difference. Let's see what happens when we enter or attempt to enter the duplicate. Notice that we have violated the constraint. It's indicating that it already exists. Okay, let's check the values here from the table. Notice that it protected, it maintained the data integrity of the contents in the table right now. That is a quick example of uniqueness with primary keys in a Postgres table. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.